Naledi was one of the first public figures in SA to announce that she had contracted the coronavirus over two months ago. This was after experiencing sudden breathing challenges on her trip to the UK. There have been a lot of developments since then with regards to her health and the virus itself. So we catch up with her to find out her progress during these unprecedented times. Naledi Siswam, how are you? I'm good. Thanks so much for having me, Bali. How are you? I'm good. It's so good to see you. You know, when I found out that you had COVID-19, I was just like, you know what? I hate it had to be a friend of mine. But the fact mm. that you are such a loving person, I was like, duh. <laughs> so how did you... <laughs> of course. How did I you... Mean, I had the same reaction. I was like, of course I got it through a hug. That would be me. You would get it through a hug and of course you'd get it in the UK, basically your second home after South Africa. So please tell us through your experience, talk us through from the beginning. Right, so um, <laughs> I actually didn't get it in the UK, I got it in South Africa. I got a phone call from a friend just before I left who I'd shared an Uber with, who'd hugged me because they'd been in contact with someone that was positive and they didn't, of course at the time they didn't know, it's not like they did it on purpose, but... Um, the first symptom I got was this tightness in my chest and it felt like someone was sitting on my chest essentially, just constricted breathing. My lungs felt like they were clamped. I couldn't draw a full uh, breath of air. And I think it's very significant when you notice your breathing, you know? Mm. It's it's one you, you don't it's not it's never something that you think about and then all of a sudden you're thinking about actually doing it. Sure. And so I felt that first symptom. And I was about four days in um, the UK, just arrived, and there'd been no announcements in the SA about what was to happen. But that very day that I felt that first symptom was our first state of emergency. So I changed my flight that very night, flew out, direct flight back to South Africa, obviously having taken all the precautions that I could to make sure that I didn't um, infect others on my way back. Um, and this was really just working off assumption. It was just, it wasn't even the fact that I knew that I was sick, I just knew something was wrong. Mm -hmm. um, then I got back here, went to the doctor, he takes my vitals, he checks my oxygen saturation, mm -hmm. he checks my, you know, he checks my check, he checks my temperature, nothing. There's no signs. So he, um, he prescribed me an asthma pump and anxiety medication because he thought I developed late onset asthma. At the time, information mm -hmm. wasn't really available. So this is what we, this is the best that we could do. This is what mm -hmm. we assumed. Um, and then I tested after that. He gave me a script to go to the laboratory and I tested for COVID-19 and waited for eight days you. and got my results that I was positive. Mm -hmm. So it was like, okay, I was right. I knew something was wrong. So now I get the information. I say to my doctor, right, what do we do? But he says, we don't have a cure and there's no vaccine. So you essentially do what you've been doing this entire time. So whatever symptom you have, you treat that symptom. You have mm. a cough, you take cough syrup. You treat the symptoms as they come, as you're dealing with them on a daily basis. Mm. And that's essentially what I did. And I stuck in self-isolation for, it was recommended that it was meant to be two weeks, but mm. I stayed in three and a half weeks just because I didn't feel so hot after the second week still. Then now, from that uncomfortability, dealing with the anxiety of knowing that you've contracted the virus, how do you deal with that reality? So, that's the thing is um, it becomes, I think in your head and you'll kick into that stage, people do, where you start to realize that you want to protect the people around you. Mm -hmm. And so self-isolation became one of those things. It was like, it was kind of like a natural thing to be like, okay, I have to stay away from others because I don't want to make anyone sick. Mm -hmm. That feeling is so much stronger than wanting to like, obviously have affection. My mom being my mom, obviously just cannot understand. And is like, you don't even know if you're sick. Wait, see, let me fix this, let me do that. And I'm literally yelling like, do not come in here. Like, don't do it. And then isolation and it's obviously you go through the test and you have, and that's probably the reason why you don't want people to have to get sick. It's just going through the test alone. That feeling of that swab going into your nasal, it feels like it's hitting your brain. That's how far it goes. Ooh. And then they yank it out and it's just a sharp, uncomfortable feeling. And I told my mom, I was like, 
if you come into this room, you are going to have to go through that process, which she then ended up having to anyway. Yeah. But um, yeah, isolation is a very interesting time to discover oneself, <laughs> to like deal with your thoughts, but also I think a time to also just relax mm. at some point, just relax and, and take time mm. to feel better and feel healthier. Now, Lady, I also want to touch on exactly what you're talking about, just the mental processes one does go through and the self-introspection and reflection in a bit. But what are just physically the side effects one feels post taking the test and now having recovered after coronavirus do you kind of feel any lingering things i know you said after two weeks you weren't still feeling quite hot mm. so um that is the thing about uh the coronavirus or COVID 19 is that it's not a straight path uh to health or straight path to recovery um it took me in total i would say about two months you. to finally get back to feeling like myself because yeah can you imagine mm. um because i so i'd come out of the two week or rather the self-imposed three and a half week isolation period and i called my doctor just before i came out because i said i'm i'm still not fully recovered in my chest i don't know what's going on i feel like i'm gonna you know infect my mom and he said no that's the strain of having taken on i mean you, you you're literally suffering from a respiratory infection your your lungs were taking a lot of strain you were struggling to breathe you were you know putting them under pressure mm. and so you are going to have um kind of like after effects of of recovery and so even when i, I would go for like walks around uh, my apartment block and I mean, I'm a runner. I, I run. This is, I, I, so I'm used to having, you know, pressure against my chest and being mm. able to breathe and how to ration my air. And this was a completely different situation. And so it took about two months to eventually feel like I was finally back to my old self. And I'm lucky because I, there's a lot of people that have developed complications post having been, you know, uh, uh, recovered. So I'm lucky that it was fairly straightforward in a sense, but mm. it did take an unnecessary long amount of time mm. to get to the stage. We do thank you for your health again. I keep saying it, but it's nothing to take for granted. And we see it now with yourself having made it out on the other end. You did, though, touch on the fact that, you know, during quarantine, you use it as, as an opportunity to self-introspect, reflect, almost press the pause button on life and just say, OK, where do I find myself right now, Naleti? What are these feelings? What are these emotions? So please may you talk me through now the psychological, I suppose, um, repercussions of having COVID-19. Yeah, so there's a series of psychological things that will happen. And the first one and what most significant is guilt. You'll start to feel guilty about the people that you've come across and the situations in which you might have made someone else feel sick and you all the surfaces that you might have touched. You know, it, it becomes like a, a process of self-flagellation. Mm. And you really, I was fortunate enough that I had conversations, which I posted on my Instagram because I wanted to share with people, with a, with a psychologist, uh, Mom Kosi, just to kind of unpack how I felt and, and these feelings of guilt. And she said, remember, you also got it from somebody else. It's not like you were the beginning source of, of COVID-19. You got it from somebody else. You're not that patient zero. Yeah, you know what I mean? But mm. it's, it's one of those situations where you really have to look at it from a bigger picture. And then, so you go through that and you kind of have to deal with that guilt. And then you have to deal with the ways that you... I think it's more important to see the ways that you move forward, how to protect people from that point on now that you're sick. Yeah. Then in terms of psychology of like sitting in a room uh, with yourself, you put yourself under pressure to have to come out with this, you know, then you have to change your life. And I don't think that that's a healthy way of looking at things. Um, I think that there are people that have taken the opportunity to grow in this, in this space. And that's amazing and brilliant. And I think there are also people that have taken this time to have a break mm. because they are busy and they have been stressed. And finally, there's a moment to kind of like calm down mm. and center yourself and maybe reconfigure the things that you wanted to do. And I mm. think that's essentially what I've gone through because I've come out Having given myself the time to rest, come out with a series of plans which I'm putting into place. Let's go into it. I mean, you've already touched on it. So let's just dive straight in your IGTV. I mean, you're educating people here on the coronavirus. From your perspective, you've got this assistance from professionals in the field. So what motivated this? Okay, maybe that's but you know, you've already mentioned what motivated this. So how is it going and where do you want to see it going? Does this have a lifeline? Yes, so um, I actually kind of like when I did the initial video, really, I, I 
admittedly did it because I wanted to just kind of explain to my friends the situation. I think, you know, my friends were wondering where I was and what was going on. Uh, I didn't realize that it would uh, take on the legs that it has. And I actually respect the responsibility of that I now have to kind of share my experience. So I've gotten into um, an ambassadorial position with um, an agency called Higher Health that works with the Department of Higher Education and Training. And essentially, that's about galvanizing the youth. It's about um, it's about spreading uh, correct information and dispelling conspiracies and getting rid of stigma and having the conversations around COVID because that's how you... Essentially, when you're talking about it and you're sharing about it is when mm-hmm. you can protect people from it. But if you're going to, you know, be like holding on to the information, uh, then you don't really gain an understanding of it and you just operate from a position of fear. Mm-hmm. And so that's really now my I'm moving into more of a, uh, a place of trying to educate people on the topic. And it's, it's so important to hear it from a person yeah. because you can read all you want from the World Health Organization and all these like different organizations mm-hmm. that have masses of information, but you don't know how to isolate it. And sometimes it's nice to understand something from a person that you might have... Um, uh, you might see, they might reflect a similarity in you, you know, that you might understand. You say, oh, that person kind of looks like me. Oh, this is their experience from an experiential position. Mm-hmm. So um, that's essentially what I have been and and continue to do. And um, just working on platforms, on a series of platforms, Al Jazeera, the United Nations, uh, there's a conference that will be coming up that I'll be working with them. Wow. Um just to try to spread as much information as I can on COVID-19. Well, thank you for that, Naledia. I'm sure a lot of people right now are flocking to your social media, especially your Instagram, to check out what you've posted so far and find out what's coming up in, in, in the close uh, future for you. So thank you for that. Thank you for spreading the knowledge. I'm so grateful for you, and I'm so grateful to eat mom even for taking care of you when you weren't well. <laughs> thank you so much for having me, my girl, and yeah. um, have an amazing afternoon. Definitely will do. We appreciate you, Saswam. Cheers. Bye. The statistics have risen, but there's still hope for those who have contracted the virus. The power is in our hands, so let's stay home, wash our hands regularly, and save lives.